This is a synaptic knob and a muscle cell. As the action potential, indicated by the white on the top, moves down the presynaptic terminal, this causes the voltage-gated calcium ion channels to open. This increases the calcium ion permeability of the presynaptic terminal cell membrane. Calcium ions enter the presynaptic terminal. The calcium ions cause the vesicles to release their neurotransmitter, acetylcholine, from the synaptic vesicles into the presynaptic cleft. This diffusion of acetylcholine across the synaptic cleft and binding of acetylcholine to acetylcholine receptors on the postsynaptic muscle fiber membrane causes an increase in the permeability of ligand-gated sodium ion channels. The movement of the sodium ions into the muscle cell results in depolarization of the postsynaptic membrane. Once threshold has been reached, a postsynaptic action potential indicated by the white is generated and moves up the cell membrane. An enzyme called acetylcholine esterase rapidly breaks down acetylcholine into acetic acid and choline in the synaptic cleft. The choline is then reabsorbed by the presynaptic terminal and combined with acetic acid to form more acetylcholine, which enters the synaptic vesicles. This picture represents the structural components of a cell. The green represents the sarcolemma. The white is the sarcoplasmic reticulum. The purple is the T-tubules. The myofiber are the individual red sticks seen in the middle. The myofibril is represented on the very end with the wire exposed on a couple of the red sticks. The black represents the fascicle. Actin is represented by the white, troponin is blue, tropomyosin is green, and the myosin is the black pipe cleaner. As the action potential travels down sarcolemma into the T-tubules, it stimulates the release of calcium from the terminal cisternae of the sarcoplasmic reticulum, where it has been sequestered by calcisequestrin into the sarcoplasm of the muscle cell. When we decide to move, calcium is released from the sarcoplasmic reticulum. These molecules bind with the troponin, causing the tropomyosin molecules to move, revealing myosin attachment sites on the actin filaments. ADP attached to the myosin heads gets released as the heads move to connect with the attachment sites on the actin, resulting in a cross-bridge formation. The remaining ADP gets released, resulting in a power stroke, when the myosin heads pull the actin inward. Once the ADP attachment is spent, ATP attaches themselves to the myosin heads. These trigger the release of myosin heads from the actin attachment sites, which are quickly broken down into ADP and a single phosphate as the heads move back into the resting position. This represents a sarcomere. The pink represents the I band, the red an A band, the black an H band, and the indentations down the center of the pink is the Z-disc. As the hands slide over each other, this represents the actin and myosin sliding over each other. This structure represents the contracted muscle. 